Got some big old beef back ribs. We're smoking them low and slow on our Ninja Wood Fire Grill today. Guys, it's going to be a banger. It's going to be a good one. You're going to want to stick around for the whole thing. It's that payoff. Trust me, you'll thank me later. I have done short ribs. I've done those dino ribs. Now I have a full rack of beef back ribs. These aren't the big meaty thick ones that you see me cook before, like we just said. They're still tasty nonetheless. What do we do to get these ribs prepped? Well, pretty simple. You take them out of the cryo vac. I'm off with some paper towels. It's a five pound rack of ribs. I've checked it out to the grill grate into my XL. It fits just barely. If you have the original uh, wood fire grill, the smaller one, you may have to do a little cutting of the rack of ribs. Okay, so you get you know move and groove and adjust. But the same cooking parameters, you know, apply. So once we got it out of the cryo vac, got it dried off right. I got a little of that Wagyu beef tallow. I'm using it as a binder. But if you don't have that, use whatever cooking oil you want to use, uh, hot sauce if you want to use that. You know, whatever you guys you know, want as a binder. These ribs are relatively dry, so I wanted a binder on there so it'll hold the barbecue seasoning I'm using. With that, I am using a barbecue rub that I got when I was in Texas. I was in Houston a month or so ago, and I grabbed a couple few bottles of rubs out there. So this is Meat Church Holy Gospel. They're a big Texas barbecue company out there. I know you can find it online, but guys, use whatever barbecue rub you want. So it's seasoned up both sides. Now, the difference between doing these beef back ribs and the baby back ribs or the pork ribs that you see me do, I am not pulling off the membrane at all on the back. I'm not even touching it. With the beef ribs, you want to have that membrane on there. At least I feel you need to have that membrane on there and it kind of keeps it all together keeps the structural integrity of the ribs because you're cooking them low and slow. They're going to break down a lot more than they would like with pork ribs. So they'll, they'll, you know, fall apart a little bit more easy if you don't have that membrane on there. And plus with that membrane, there's a bunch of fat underneath it, which is going to help render and then make your uh, beef ribs juicy. So with these beef ribs, I do not take the membrane off the back. You make your own call on that one, but that's just the way I do it or well, don't do it in this case. Ribs are set up, seasoned up. They're sweating in there right now. They're chilling. We're about to get this bad boy fired up. Uh, we are going to use Bear Mountain Pellets, cherry wood flavor. Okay. Got it all set up. Let's go turn it on. We are smoking them at 250 Fahrenheit. So I'll put the Celsius right here. Right. And then uh, we're going to take them to about 175, 180. And then I'm going to wrap them in tin foil, spritz it down with a little water, wrap it up tight with that foil, just so we can give it a little steam in there, a little braise in there. We'll take them up to about 205 or so, let them rest. I'll be checking my temperatures with my handy dandy lightning instant read. Being that it's a, you know, kind of a thin beef rib, you're not going to need to put a temp spike in there or any other probe. You're just going to watch it with this. We're going to start off by checking it with this thing every half hour or so until it gets to that 170, 175. And we'll wrap it up and we'll finish it up. I can't imagine this cook's going to take more than two hours, but at the end of the video, I'll let you know where we're at. Cool? Cool. What do you say? Let's get this bad boy fired up. I'm going to turn our bad boy on. Hello. Good morning. How are you doing? Take it to the smoker mode. Gonna back this down to 250, two hours. Uh, you know what, let's just pump that up to three so we don't have to mess with it later. And let's hit start. Let's get that smoke rolling. Smoke is rolling guys, look at that. <laughs> People say we don't get enough smoke with this thing. Let's get our rack of ribs on. Now you can see what I'm saying. It barely fits in there. So you may have to cut or adjust accordingly. All right, we'll check it on about a half hour. So it's been about a half hour, a little bit more. Let's take a look, get a closer look to it. Oh, that's just some gorgeous color, guys. Ooh, look at that. All right, let's take a temp. We're about 150, 160. I think we give it another half hour. We should be where we want to be when we wrap these up in some foil. More than an hour in. Let's check some temps right here in the middle. About 175 or so. You see it's kind of curled up. Got a little pullback on the bones in there. Let's go ahead and get this wrapped up in some tin foil and we'll get it back on. Let's get our rack of ribs on the foil. I'm going to add a lot more of this holy gospel on there just to add, you know, to make sure that we're to make sure that we're keeping the good flavors going. It'll mix with a little bit of the water, a little bit of the juices in there. I'm just gonna add just a touch of water in there. It's gonna help steam, braise in there a little bit, keep everything nice and tender. I'm gonna save you all the noise of wrapping this up in the foil. We'll put it back on the grill when it's wrapped up. All right, we got them back on the grill. They're nice and wrapped up tight. Get it shut down. 
see you in about an hour or so. And we let this go. We let it go the full three hours. But now it's temping out evenly all the way through. It was temping out, you know, 160 over here, but 200 over here. So I just wanted to let it go the whole time. So that's why we're doing that. Now we're just gonna let it rest for about an hour or so, and then uh, we'll uh, chop them up. Got a little breezy out here, guys. So bear with me if you get a little wind noise. These have been resting for a good hour or so. These big old beefy ribs. Let's go ahead and just slice one off. Now you can see that, you know, the meat is pretty minimal in there, but still tasty nonetheless look at that it looks just tender juicy gorgeous all right let's take a bite what do you say sorry for the wind got a little breezy out here got a good bite right in the middle let's go oh they're just falling right off the bone baby mm. Mm -mm. remember the napkin this time yep yeah, that's a hit right there mm. all right let's recap it real quick before i get blown away here 250 Ended up going three hours because it was a little uneven on the temps when I would check one side to the other. Three hours. Let it rest for about a half hour, 45 minutes. Wasn't quite paying attention, but perfectly nice, tender, easy. Set and forget it. Pure ribby goodness, baby. Mm. Y'all, if you want to get one of these wood fire grills so you can make some big old beef bag ribs too, link is down below in the video description. If you'd like to get anything I used in the videos from knives, cutting boards, merch, all that good stuff, links are all down below, baby. If you'd like to become a show producer like all these awesome people scrolling in front of me right now, people that would love to have a big old rack of beef bag ribs, that works. There are two ways to join. Either you hit my Patreon link in the video description or you hit that join button right next to the subscribe button, which you should have already hit by now. Other than that, guys, we're done. Listen, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for cooking with CJ. Take care.